Don't worry, this is not a speech about feminism. I'm kidding, it is a speech about feminism. It says the title, right? But I want to talk about the way we use this apologetic term, tone, when we pronounce this word feminism. And for me particularly, it wasn't an easy topic to choose. I had the free will to do so, knowing that it really annoys the hell out of people. <laughs> because feminism sometimes is annoying, right? So this is another speech about feminism. Just to be clear, sometimes we don't know what the notion is. So as I'm a teacher, I'm used to defining things at the beginning. So feminism, as opposed to what popular culture might think, what we might think unknowingly, is just a movement that promotes social, economic, and political equality between men and women. Right? So why is it so annoying? Because it doesn't annoy us. Let me tell you a little story about this, because this is how we say it. We always have to start with a little story. How I discovered that I was a feminist? That you think 
they don't have the right for all the privileges they got in all these centuries and you really hate them. Well, that's not very logical, is it? Because it's like saying that if you support the rights of black people, then you're against white people. Supporting one group does not mean that you're against everyone else. So it is not logical to say that if you're a feminist, you hate men. There might be people who hate men, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're all feminists. Stereotype number two, if you're a feminist, then you're a man hater, obviously. You also hate the traditional role of the women, and all the women who embrace this, and you promote masculinity, because, right, being feminine means being confined to the house, and being confined to a traditional role that limits you. getting out of your comfort zone. So I will just say this, exemplifying the role of feminists in our changes is that feminism brought with itself financial independence. And just the free choice, the choice to be or not confined to the role of a homemaker, the choice of having or not a career, the choice of buying your own crowns, looking like a princess if you want to. Grow, growing out your body hair if you want to. But that does not mean that these are things that characterize your feminists. Well, <laughs> why do we need feminism today? Because we gain all our rights. This is what people say about us. Well, a recent study shows that the main characters of TV shows are these characters. And if you recognize them, then it's bad. And even if you don't recognize them, but you know that they're all over the media, it's still bad. So our role today, maybe it's not fighting for new rights in civilized countries, but maintaining a safe and healthy environment where young girls are not poisoned by these images. I'd like to talk about modern, modern feminism in terms of a young girl called Tavi Gavitz, who founded her own in the United States and gave the possibility of young girls to express themselves and identify themselves outside women's stereotypes. I like to say, think of feminism today as Debbie Sterling, who founded Goldie Blocks, the first construction game for girls, because she believes that women can become great engineers if they're exposed to the right experiences. So, how does this love story end? It doesn't end. It's happily ever after. I like to think about feminism as not a rule book, as not something that you have to follow out after some principles. Feminism is an ongoing conversation. It's a process that has to continue. We have to keep doing this conversation and having this conversation about feminism so that we won't forget, so that we create our own role models and show our thanks to all the great things that feminism has brought.